Chug Mo Beer asking about Bubba Bolden's loss and how it will affect the defensive backfield. Yeah, Bubba Bolden um, broke his ankle pretty much, uh, celebrating his interception. That's me saying it because I had a very similar injury. Uh, that's not from Miami Athletics, although Manny Diaz did say in his Monday presser that Bubba Bolden is out for the year. So that uh, is done. Ben Griffin, Lorenzo Lingard went to Manny Diaz earlier this season and asked to redshirt this year, so he's redshirting. Anyway, back to Bubba Bolden. Um, yeah, with his injury, whether it be soft tissue, whether it's a broken ankle, whatever, the ankle uh, on his right leg is keeping him out. Uh, he was helped off the field. Um, after the injury, he was seen in a walking uh, boot with crutches and everything like that. So, yeah, you know, it's a it's a tough break for him five games in because he missed the first four because of NCAA shenanigans. Um, but and Bubba Bolden was really coming into his own. He caused that interception at Pittsburgh. And he after that game, he tweeted, yo, turnovers are going to be my thing. So then he comes in this week and he gets his own interception uh, and just a freak accident there. Um the thing I would do is I would give more snaps to the top three now at uh, safety, that being Gervin Hall, Amari Carter, and Robert Knowles. And then I would say maybe take 25 to maybe half of the snaps that you would give to Bubba Bolden, and you give those to Keontre Smith, um, the freshman um, All-American from Shamanan Madonna prep school down here in Hollywood. Uh, he's played in enough games where he's not going to redshirt this year because he's played on special teams. So – I would say start to integrate him more into base defense because he's going to have a role in this defense moving forward. Uh, Robert Knowles obviously is a senior, so he will not be returning. But then your top four is going to be Hall, Carter, um, Bubba Bolden when he comes back, and then Keontre Smith. So, yeah, I would say divide the majority of the snaps between the top three who are here now and then give the rest of those snaps to Smith so he gets you know five to eight, maybe a little bit more uh, base defense snaps in the secondary uh, at safety, and you have enough – other experienced guys in Carter Hall and Knowles where you can pair him effectively to, you know, make sure that he's not making the critical errors uh, that might cost the team the game or something like that. Is KJ Osborne as good as advertised better? How you would evaluate his play, obviously coming in from Buffalo, lower level of play, but much touted in much excitement surrounding his emergence. And certainly uh, he's been a key factor in the passing game. K.J. Osborne is as advertised. Uh, he's not the most physically dominant player at the wide receiver position. He's not the biggest. He's not the strongest. He's not the fastest. Uh, but he is very crisp and pristine uh, in his route running. His hands are usually pretty good. He did have a drop or two uh, this week at Florida State. Um, but, yeah, no, he is he has settled that position group in the way that we thought he would. Uh, just an older guy. You know, he's 23 years old. He's a fifth-year senior. He's been in these games. Uh, well, not these games per se, but he's played a lot of college football. Uh, you know, and he's a guy who knows how to go about his business to get prepared and be ready to play uh, major college football. So, uh, yeah, you know, just uh, he, he's been a real uh, key addition to this team uh, and to that wide receiver group and just showing those guys how to prepare. So when you see a guy like a Mark Pope or, or like a D Wiggins going out there and making these big plays, affecting the game in a positive way, it is hard to believe that they're doing that without having seen what KJ Osborne has done and then following and molding themselves uh, through his preparation habits and things like that. So uh, KJ Osborne is your leading receiver this year with 36 catches. He's second in yards at 439. Uh, your leading touchdown uh, receiver at five touchdowns uh, on the year. So four catches for about 49 yards a game. Um, but yeah, always out there. Uh, you know, he blocks hard. He runs hard all of his routes. You know, he's just, he is that more professional, polished mature guy uh and his performance and his leadership uh even the passive leadership of i'm not he's doesn't even need to be that rah-rah guy but if you remember back to fall camp what happened every day after practice he went on the jugs machine because that's what i need to do to be ready so i don't even need to say it but if you're looking around the locker room hey where where kj at kj still out there and even that passive leadership is a thing that I think is, is paying dividends for this program uh both this year and then moving forward because yeah you know these sophomores uh Sophomores become juniors and juniors become seniors and you learn the proper way to work and prepare. And I think that that even more than the statistics on the field, which are still very good. And again, he had that game winner against Pittsburgh, has the most receiving touchdowns on this team. KJ Osborne has been a big, big positive addition for this team. Again, it's uh, MiamiMoneyBall.com. You go there, you uh, 
review whatever game Miami's playing that week, whether that be the Dolphins or the Hurricanes, and you review the game, you look at the stats categories, you make your predictions, and if you get them right or close, and uh, you pick out uh, a number of great prizes and uh, benefits that you can gain there at that fantasy football site, MiamiMoneyBall.com.